Hey everybody, welcome. We're going to talk about Bootstrap Grid in Canvas, and this is a way that you can lay out content on your screen. So let's look at an example of what Bootstrap can do in order to organize the layout of your page. Here's a simple Canvas page. I have a banner, I have some text, and then I have these elements down here. Now these would all be hyperlinked to other places on the course, such as units or pages. But what's unique about these buttons is that they are responsive. These are set up using Bootstrap so that if I change the dimensions of my screen, then they actually organize themselves and they fit differently so that it's responsive. And this would look good especially on a mobile device. Or regardless the size of the screen, they'll adjust to accommodate. And that's important today because students are accessing our Canvas content on a myriad of different devices, and they might be seeing it on a phone or an iPad or a small laptop, or it might be a big computer monitor, and you want it to look good regardless which device they're using. So before we dive into the nuts and bolts, let's take a look at what is this grid format that we're using. It divides the screen into 12 equal portions. And for whatever content you have, whether it's a picture or text or another element, you can determine how many of those 12 units it occupies on the width of the screen. So if I happen to have 12 things that I wanted to show, then that's easy. I just say each one is worth one. If I had four things, then I can say, okay, each one will be worth three things. So that first one is worth three. The second one will fill in four, five, six, and then third one, seven, eight, nine, and then 10, 11, 12. If I specify that they should be a value of four, then I can fit three across because 12 divided by four equals three. So it's essentially, if I say call four, that's the same as me saying, I want this to take up 33% of the width of the screen or four units out of 12. I can specify six. If I had two units, then I can say I want these each to be six, so they'll each take up half of the screen. Or I can say I want it to take up the entire width of the screen. So call 12 is the same as saying I want this to be a width of 100, as opposed to six would be a width of 50%. And you can divide them up, but they don't have to be even. I could say I want one of these units to be four, the other to be eight. For example, if I had a picture, maybe I want the picture to be four, or 33% of the width, and then the rest of the text, I want to fill in the rest of those eight. Or I could fill in something like a 363, three, which equals 12. So this is the basic concept that we have 12 units wide, and that's the width of the screen, and we can determine how many of those units each element takes. So what does that look like on our screens? To determine how many units an element takes, you would use code. In this case, it'll be a class. Class col-sm-4 would be an example of one class that you can use. And I'm essentially saying that recognizing there's 12 units and I want this to be four units wide. SM is referring to a small screen and there are different sizes that you can categorize. So the first one would be XS, which would be phones, anything smaller than 768 pixels wide. So any smartphone would fit that. SM, like I have at the top there, would be tablets. So it's also small. Anything that's larger than 768 pixels will be SM. MD would be for small laptops, maybe Chromebooks, netbooks, anything that's larger than 992 pixels. And then the LG would be the large laptops, monitors, anything that has at least 1200 pixels wide. So again, at the top there, I'm saying, I wanna specify that on tablets, on small screens, I want it to take up four units wide. Let's take a look at some other code. What would that look like? Here's one that's class COL MD2 SM6 and XS12. So I'm essentially saying that on laptops, I want this unit to be two units wide, but when we get to small screens like tablets, I want it to be six units wide or 50%. And if it's on phones, which would be XS, then I want it to be 12, which would be the entire width. And so if I ran this line of code and I'm looking at on a computer monitor and I have six units, then each of those units are two and two times six is 12. So of the 12 units, I have two and then two, 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 I have six units, each of them are two, and so that's gonna span the entire width. Now, if you specify only five units, then it would be you know, two, four, six, eight, 10, and then the other two to make up 12 will just be empty. Likewise, if I specify three things and each of them are two, it's only gonna take up 50% of the screen because I'm only using six units out of 12, two for each of those elements. So that's what it looks like on a computer monitor, but let's look at what this looks like on a tablet. Here I specified, since the tablet's smaller than 992 pixels wide, then what I'm seeing is that for SM, I want each unit to be six wide, which is 50%. And so it'll take that first blue, that'll take the first six, that green will take the second six for 12, and then it'll start a new row. So all six units are now three rows with two columns. 
And then let's jump over and see this content on a phone. For the phone, I specified each unit should just be all 12 wide. And so now they're stacked one on top of each other. So it's the same content, but it looks different depending on the resolution of the screen, essentially the size of the screen that the student is seeing. And that's essentially what we're seeing here. I have these units and I decided that on large screens, I want those to be three a piece. So three, six, nine, and 12. But then when it gets smaller, like a, a netbook or Chromebook, then I want those to each be four units out of 12. So that would be four, eight, and 12. Let's shrink it down a little bit. And then I decide I want them to be six. So here's six, 12, six, 12. On the smallest screens, then I say, just have it span the entire width and we'll go sequentially like that. So now let's take a look at the code. So this first section, that's not relevant to us. That's just a picture and some text. What we're interested in is the rest of this code. So how I set it up, I have a div that is a content box, and then I have another div that is a grid row. So I'm specifying that I want this to be grid, just like how we've talked about. And then I have the individual items. So I'm going to isolate this item right here. This is that first box. And let's walk through the code a little bit. I have a div to start it out with. And in this div, I'm going to specify the class like we were talking about. So on a large screen, I want this to take three units. On a medium screen, I want it to take four units. On a small screen, I want it to be six. And on the smallest screen, I want it to be 12. And remember, 12 is saying I want it to be all 12 units wide. And the screen is only 12 units, and so it's essentially saying 100% of the width. Whereas when it's small, I want it to take up 50% of the width, six units of the 12. And here I want it to take four units out of the 12. And here I want it to take three units out of the 12. I put in just a little bit of padding as well. And then I jump to the next div. So this div is a button. What we're seeing right here is a button. I specified the class BTN. That's optional. You don't have to. You can just style it so it's not a button. But I wanted it to be a button. And then here's the background color. I made the background color the same as the global navigation bar right here. But you can specify whichever color you want. I decided I don't want a border, but I do want it to be a certain height. I want it to be at least 75 pixels high. And I put a little bit of a margin. Five pixels isn't much, but it's just a little margin on the outside. And then all of the text, I wanted it to be center aligned. Next, since it's a button, when you press a button, it has to go somewhere. And so I have an anchor tag. I added some styling. It's up to you. I styled it position relative. I put in a little bit of padding and height. So the height is saying that I want this to be at least 70 pixels high but I want there to be padding at the top of the bottom. 30 pixels and zero is meaning I want there to be 30 pixels from the top edge of the button to the text, as well as from the bottom edge of the button to the text. And then left and right, I don't want any padding, just from the top and the bottom. And that way it doesn't look like it's at the very top of the button and that would look weird. I also put in a display block and text decoration none because I didn't want all of these words to be blue and underlined. And then you click on it and it turns purple. I didn't want any kind of text decoration, so I put that as none. And then you just put in your title and put in your href. That's when you press the button, where do they go? Probably some place in Canvas. And we'll talk about where to get that href. And the last bit is my text. I did put a span. I wanted to have a color. And so I put a color. It's kind of white, but it's a little bit off-white. It's like a, a shade darker than, than white, because that way it would look good with this dark background. And each of these other elements are exactly the same as this first one, only I replaced the words. Start here, unit one, unit two, all the way to unit eight, and then that's the end of my elements here. So that gives me the framework of what I want. And of course, I can add more things. I can copy this, this last one, and I can paste it, or I can delete some of these. Perhaps you just want five, or perhaps you need 12. So let's go ahead and find this href now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump out of the HTML editor, and I'm going to put a hard return right here. And I'm just going to find a link. Where do I want this to go? When they click start here, I want to take them somewhere in the course. So I'm going to click on course links. And let's put take them to a module, maybe how to create interesting pages in Canvas. I think that's good enough. And so now I'm going to hop back over to this HTML editor. And I can see that element that I just put in. So there's the title, how to create interesting pages in Canvas. Here's the href. And I'm just going to cut that. And then I don't need this anymore. So I'll delete that. And then I'll replace this with the things that I just copied. So now I have a title and now I have a place for them to go when they click on the button. So let's go ahead and save that. And here's my element. And you can see when I click on this, then it'll take me to the modules page, which is where I want it to go. And I could direct my students to an assignment or a content page or an announcement, whatever I want.
Now there's one last thing on this page that I want to show you. I put some content down here and it's always nice when things fit evenly, like four across, each of those is 25%. If it's three across, then each of those are 33%. But what if you have five across? Five doesn't go evenly into 12, but I want them to be evenly spaced apart. And so here I have five elements and let's take a look at the code that I used to space those apart. I'm gonna jump into HTML. I'm gonna skip down to the very bottom and I created a very simple class and it's a grid row. And then I specified on medium and large screens, I want this to be two. On small screens, I want it to be five. And on the smallest screen, I want it to be 12. I put in some colors, I alternated the colors. And then I just put text align center. I put some padding for the text, 20 pixels above and below, and then a margin of 10 pixels around. And other than that, they're all pretty much the same. And the difference is when I specified the class as grid row, I also specified this term right here, around dash SM which means that if there's any extra space around these elements, I want them to be spaced evenly. Now, what would happen if I didn't have that? Let's go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna paste it. And this time I'm going to delete around SM. And you'll see that on large screens, I specified these each as two. And so that'll be two wide and then four, six, eight, and 10. And then there will be two units of empty space on the screen. So let's go ahead and save that. And we'll jump down to the very bottom. And now you can see the difference between the code that I used, which was around dash SM. So it spaced them evenly versus this one where it just crammed everything to the left. Since it doesn't equal 12, it doesn't span the entire width of the page. It's only two, four, six, eight, ten, 10. And then the last two that make up 12 are just empty space. And lastly, let's take a look at these in different resolutions. So I'm gonna bump this down a little bit and you can see they're five across until it gets too small and then they become two across and then even smaller they become one across. So on mobile they look just fine but on the larger monitors then without that justification and without that extra space in between then they come together and that's fine too. It's up to you your personal preferences. If you like it like this then that's just fine. If you want them to be evenly spaced then you have the code for that as well. So the reason why I decided to share this with you is because I've seen a lot of design that's very creative in Canvas courses, but also that doesn't really work on mobile friendly devices. So using this method is good because regardless the size of the screen, it'll always look good for your students. If I were to put all of these in a table, this would be a four by three table, then for one, I'd have empty cells. And it's not good for a couple reasons. One, because it's not accessible, it's not good for screen readers. You never wanna use tables to style the layout of your page. You only want to use tables for organizing data or information that's categorized. If this were a table, then whenever I adjust the width of it, then it would still maintain that four by three ratio and everything would be really crammed in there. Imagine four cells wide and three cells tall. It would just look really small and it wouldn't be very useful to the students. It would look bad and it wouldn't be accessible. This is also a better method than floating units to the right or to the left using CSS because although that looks good on a big screen, it's not responsive and those units will keep floating even if students are using a small screen. And so that wouldn't look good. You really want something that's responsive, that just operates well, that looks good regardless of the screen size. And so I hope that this is helpful for you. I know that this was a little hard for me to wrap my mind around thinking in units of 12, but the more you play around with it, then the more sense it makes. And it really is a good approach for organizing the content on your page. If you want to take the code that I used, it's available to you. You can check out my Canvas course or check out our blog where I have a write-up of everything that I talked about here. Take the code, put it in your own Canvas course, tinker around with things, change the elements, change the values, try and break it and try and fix it. That's really the best way to understand these concepts. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. I'll have new content coming out every week. I would love for you to join me as I continue exploring all the features and all the things that you can do in Canvas. It's a lot of fun for me and I think that it's helping me with my courses and I want to help you with your courses as well. Follow us on social media, tell all your friends, families, strangers that you see on the street, tell them about our social media and tell them to follow. And as always, I want to tell everybody, happy teaching and learning.